Hi, wrestling fans. This is Mad Matt Carter, along with AIWF Hall of Famer Brian Danty, telling you and reminding you about the most awesome, at least we think so, wrestling podcast there is. It's AIWF Ringside Wrestling, and it comes your way on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, just to name a few. Brian, they can also see it on YouTube. But the cool thing about our podcast is, it's completely live and interactive every Sunday night on Facebook. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, we get into uh, all the all the uh, the news of AIWF, WWE, TNA, all all of it. We don't just cover AIWF; we cover we cover the whole spectrum of wrestling. You can comment. You can you can put comments in there. We'll answer your questions. It, it's a great time, and sometimes. Most of the time we're talking about wrestling. Sometimes it goes off the rails, and that's just that. Sometimes that's even more entertaining. Yeah, that's part of part of the charm, I guess, of the show, right? So be sure to tune in anywhere you find your favorite podcast on the AIWF Ringside Wrestling YouTube channel, and of course on Facebook Live on Sunday night for the most interactive wrestling podcast in the United States. It's AIWF Ringside Wrestling. February 25th, 2024, and for those of you who are diehard wrestling fans know what February 25th is, it's Ric Flair's birthday! 75, baby! Yeah, so happy birthday, nature boy. These are some uh, just some photos I was able to nab from around the internet. Uh, you can see top left is Flair being interviewed by Bob Cottle uh, in the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium during a NWA Pro Wrestling and Worldwide taping. Yeah, in top middle, you can see Flair and Wahoo going nose to nose. Bottom left is Flair and Steamboat. And the other two photos are from Flair's retirement match, at least his first one. Uh, <laughs> and back in uh, 08, I believe, was it not? WrestleMania 24? Uh, it was the one where it rained at the beginning uh, in Florida at the Citrus Bowl, I believe, is where they were at. And the uh, sta stadium had... When the WWE, uh, WWE people got there, they uh, realized the stadium looked a little more run down than they expected. And so uh, then you see those palm trees in the bottom right above the WrestleMania sign. All those extras were added by WWE to improve the aesthetics of the, the stadium. You know, the Citrus Bowl has been there forever. So, I mean, yeah. So, anyway, uh, my one of my favorite flair matches is the one in the bottom left of the screen, him and steamboat at Chi town rumble 89. Everybody remembers that because our older fans do because although they, they had feuded in the seventies and eighties, most of those weren't on TV. They were just at arena events. And so if you didn't buy a ticket and go see the matches that night, you didn't get to see how good they were. But when steamboat came back in the early days of WCW, and they had those three matches in 89. A lot of people say those all three were classics. But I think the first one was my favorite, you know, just because it was the first one, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, But I, I would go around the horn and, hey, what, since it's his birthday, what are your favorite Ric Flair matches? Well, yeah, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, look, um, that that uh series of three matches with Ricky Steamboat is hard for me to to choose one but I just Rick Flair was always one of those guys that they could put somebody they put the the young hot talent to for him to make them look good mm -hmm. and, and and get them over and he, he was really good at that but it was it was so refreshing to see him in there with somebody who was seasoned and who knew what they were doing and 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 just see how well he he could truly wrestle when, when he was in there with with somebody uh who who was at his skill level and Ricky Steamboat uh definitely was i mean he was just watching two masters of their craft going at it and it was just uh uh, an awesome thing to sit to to watch. Brian, did you ever get a chance before they moved the WWE Network stuff to Peacock? They had a show called Boogie Jam '84 on there, and Flair and it was from Greensboro, and the main event was like Jimmy Valiant and Dusty Rhodes, maybe or somebody else against the Mask Assassins. And the, the Mask Assassin 2 lost his mask, and it was Hercules Hernandez. But they Flair and Steamboat were on that card, wrestled for the world title, and wrestled an hour. 
and it's fucking amazing. I mean, just the speed that they kept going through that whole match. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, I, I didn't, I didn't see that one, but I have seen Flair wrestle for an hour before, and and it's hard to to keep uh, to, especially now. I mean, it's different back then, but now, I mean, if if a match starts going over 20 minutes i'm like start looking at my watch <laughs> all right fellas let's uh let, let's go ahead and take this home you're there uh you know I'm, I'm starting to lose interest but uh but uh not only could flair go for 60 seconds he could he could uh uh he could make it entertaining for mm -hmm. that long how about you reagan what's your favorite flair match you think you've ever seen um i really like um this is gonna sound funny but when uh, I always enjoyed him and Dusty Fl Dusty Dusty Rhodes, um, but I really enjoyed watching back and watching when the when Dusty was the Midnight Rider and the mm -hmm. the matches they that had. Was Dusty, because huh? That was Dusty. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh oh my man, God. now Dusty's gonna have to come back from the grave and break my legs. Next thing, my childhood. Yeah, <laughs> and next thing she's gonna tell us is that Bob Armstrong and the Bullet were the same guy. Oh, <laughs> how is that possible? They from out of town, Jimmy Valiant. Yeah, no, exactly. The person. Because yeah. if I remember correctly, I gotta stop. Wait, what? Because <laughs> oh, if I remember correctly, he beat Flair, right? As he the did. Midnight Rider, he and then did. he had to, he had to relinquish the title. But one of the rules was that uh, the, champion, to, uh, the, the world champion couldn't be under a hood. Yeah, yeah, that was important. Well, like he, he had but to. If, now, if y'all step up and say that the dirty yellow dog was Barry Windham, I'm leaving the show. Right. <laughs> okay, no, it was Brian Pillman. So, <laughs> <you're okay. laughs> but um, I really, you know, I. I, 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 okay. So like this is an um, unpopular opinion here. I don't, I'm not that big of a Ric Flair fan. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I see why everybody likes him. Um, I, I, I prefer Arn Anderson. I prefer his wrestling style. I prefer his mic work, but that is a very, very unpopular opinion. So, but Rick, Rick Flair was very um, fun to watch, and you know, and um, you know, Rick Flair holds a spot in my heart because of the the picture in Greensboro incident with my friends and and stuff. So, um, where my friend and I chickened out and didn't take our other friend's picture. So he holds a dear, dear spot in my heart because of that. So, um, you know, but uh, he. I was reading something recently where people were talking about he opened the way for people to have like a personality in wrestling. Um, whereas like before you had, you know, you had personalities, but you didn't have people that really, really went for it on the mic as much. Mm -hmm. And they were just saying that, that, you know, he kind of opened the way to the wrestling like we have now. Okay. Rick Diesel, your favorite Ric Flair match. Well, before I get into that, I got a couple of uh, I got a couple of things I need to address. One, Ginger wanted me to ask you guys if I hurt anybody's ears because I'm so loud. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. that just sounds like a wife complaint. Well, it is because I think she can't hear the TV sometimes when I'm doing the show. Oh, I thought you were out in your office doing this show. No, well, the office is in the spare room now. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we moved the office back in the house. Oh, You're going to okay. have to get you some of those things to put on your walls that buffer the sound. Like in Well, the we ordered room. wallpaper for back here today, so by next week, maybe that'll be. She's took a real interest in what the set looks like behind me. I don't know why. I don't know where that came from, but it's happening. I'm not going to argue with it. Hey, it happened with my wife took an interest, too, and you see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's so, a, that, the day she brought it up was the first day I texted you. Have you got any old posters? <laughs> All right. The second thing is, is that I think I've discovered why I scratch all the time. You got a nervous tick. Well, from what I understand, what I've been told talking to people who know is, and, and when I say this, everyone I've just going to go, Oh, it's a combination of, uh, 
anxiety. <laughs> and uh, what else? Oh, they said something else, what it was, but it's, it's, it's a lot of anxiety and nervous tension. Yeah. So, I could have judged that without charging you $150. Well, yeah, but they say that it's, it's phantom itching is what it is. If you'll notice, I'll do it a lot, especially yeah. on my back. Mm-hmm. And they said well, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm it's stress. What is stress and anxiety? Me of all people. Yeah, mm. I can't. Well, you're so you're high strung and you have to constantly be moving. If you're sitting down, I've noticed over the years you do it more if you're sitting down. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it confines me. I, I remember when uh, me and Allison and Jordan went to uh, the went to Florida and done the Harry Potter ride. Mm -hmm. They clamp you in. I thought I was dying mm. because I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. And I like, I, I almost had to have them take me off the ride. And I was like 50 some years old. <laughs> but anyway, uh, getting back to what you said, uh, uh, anything with Ricky Steamboat naturally. If you, if, if anything with Ricky Steamboat is not one of your favorite matches, then you're probably not a Ric Flair fan. But with me, that center pitcher right there, Rick and Wahoo McDaniel. Now, one, Brian, you especially, Brian, uh, know how close Wahoo, you know, he was my mentor for a long time. And uh, he was, I like when Wahoo and, and, and Flair wrestled because it wasn't really as much an athletic match as a brawl. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like, because Wahoo would knock your goddamn block off. <laughs> I know. Uh, but that's what I like, because I think that was some of the most demanding matches physically and, and you know, like just the sheer punishment of them that Flair had. Because Wahoo, I mean, you know, you remember, Brian, his hands was like freaking big-ass T-bone steaks. They were so mm -hmm. thick. So, uh, and, and uh, didn't Wahoo uh, uh, have something to do with with Flair's training? Was he one of his? Uh, uh, one of his I know Flair trained with Vern Gagne. I don't know how much Wahoo. I'm, I know Wahoo had something to do to help him a lot in the early years. I don't know how much training it was, but I'm well, sure. I, I just had remember something. an article like years ago where yeah, Wahoo was talking about uh, teaching Flair's uh, stuff. But yeah, I don't know if it, if it was his training or yeah, if it was just mentoring. Yeah, and um, to to bring it to like a like a a more recent, not really recent, but like you know his run in WCW during the MWA in God Almighty, <laughs> I, I told you I was going to see how long I could last. Um, you got this. This is going to make an interesting show. <laughs> During the NWO. That's why I wanted to do it yet last night, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I would not have been able to do it last night. Um, but, um, like, one of the things that was quite enjoyable during that time was right after NWO did their um, horseman skit that made so many people mad. And um, I, I felt like the, the work he did with Kurt Hennig after that was really good like and you know like he kind of took like you you can say that the horseman was not the greatest then like that wasn't a horseman that most people liked it wasn't you know but but it um it kind of blurred those lines between what's real and what's not real in wrestling because you know later on after i did some research you know, at the time, every all the message boards and stuff were saying that how mad Ric Flair was about this and how he was really going after him and for that for that skit. But then, in, after several years, I found out that he was the one who was actually pushing for it. You know, and 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 I think it's something that he did that was very entertaining um, for the time period. And then, um, you know, um, but that's about it. So. <laughs> Was that the Sid Vicious years? No, it was um, it was Kurt Hennig. It was Arn Anderson, Kurt Hennig, um, Mongo, and um, Chris Ben. Yeah, ben Wally. Wally. yeah, I think Ben. Wally but anyway, cool. so the the Horseman skit, the skit was that um, it was after Arn had come out and said that he couldn't wrestle anymore, and he told Kurt Hennig that he could have his spot. Mm -hmm. in the horseman and then 
the NWO did a skit where um, Kevin Nash was Arn and like um, Sean Waltman was um, was Flair and it was just so over the top. But it was at the time, I, like I said, it really blurred those lines that, that were, you know, between, like I said, what was real and what wasn't. And so people really bought into that Flair was really mad, that he was really pissed off at Kevin Nash and Scott Waltman and like that he just wanted to go after them. But many years later, you know, it came out that that he was actually pushing for all this stuff. So it just didn't make any sense to me at the time because they made that big rigmarole about, you know, Anderson giving him his spot and, uh, you know, Fla you know, Flair had returned and all this kind of stuff. It's like they do these big things with the horsemen. And then the very next week, the NWO would just beat them and spray paint them black and, and mm -hmm. just dog yeah, them the and fuck out. And it just after the second time around, when Kurt Hennon slammed Flair's head in the cage at, at, in fall roll in 97, like that's like really when my, I started getting a bad taste in my mouth for WCW. For 